Today we're going over debt stacking because so many people graduate from college and get into the real world. And even if they find the perfect job, they still can't figure out why they're always struggling from paycheck to paycheck. The number one reason why most people struggle after college in the real world is because they are involved in what's known as debt stacking. What does debt stacking mean? When I was growing up, there was a famous phrase. You were stacking your paper. You were stacking bread. You were stacking chips. And if you were doing that, you had it made because that means that you had money in the bank. You had freedom to do whatever it is that you wanted to do. You felt good watching money in your bank account. But what does it mean on the flip side when it comes to stacking debt? What if you're a debt stacker? Debt stacker means you're taking money, the hard-earned money that you had in your bank account, you're taking that out. You don't have freedom to be able to spend money here and spend money there because you've already spent it. If you're debt stacking, that means that you're taking all of your money and you're in a, a rush to spend money on one debt to another debt and to another debt. And that's part of the reason why most people find themselves in the real world struggling, even if they have a good job and they can't figure out why they can never make ends meet. So let's get straight into the lesson. If you notice behind me, I have taken your life and I have broken it down into three categories. When you were a kid, when you're a college student, and now here you are as an adult. So when you were a kid, life was easy, right? Maybe you got an allowance. Maybe you didn't have any bills to pay. Maybe you didn't really have any responsibilities. Life was like a dream, right? Boy, don't we wish we were back at this stage in life. But then what happens? You know, you get older, you start to mature, and then college becomes your first big step out to the road of independence. So what do you do once you get to college, once you become that college student? What you do is you start to take out what is known as student loans. I know, don't cringe. Don't turn the video off yet. This is for your learning. I'm trying to put this video together because I want you to stop yourself from falling into the same trap that so many of us have fallen into and don't have any money to show for all of our success. So stay tuned. Bear with me. Once you go to college, you take out what's known as a student loan debt. Most of us, right? You, you kids with the silver spoon in your mouth, stay tuned. You take out a student loan. Right? Sally Mae, this is your first experience in debt stacking. Now, you don't just stop there. Because all of us, you know, you had to go through the student loan process. You had to get a co-signer, blah, 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 blah. Federal loans, private loans, all of that. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, why am I watching this guy talking about debt stacking? What does this guy know anything about student loans or my situation in debt? He doesn't know what he's talking about. I paid off over $95,000 in student loan debt. College was very expensive. I stayed there for five years. I actually t attended two private universities. So I know a little bit about student loan debt. I know how to pay it off. I also know other things about personal finance. So now that I've established that, the first thing that you got when you went to college was student loans, right? And we'll go back to that soon, but I'm going to give you a break for just a second. I know it's a sensitive subject. Second thing that you did once you were in college was, thanks to your well-intentioned family member or friend, you decided it was a good idea to get a credit card, right? To start building up that credit because everybody told you in the real world that in the real world you needed to have a good credit score. So the second thing that you got was a credit card. Okay? You know, and... When it comes to this credit card, I'm going to start calling this baby credit, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But the reason why I call this baby credit is because, you know, you were just getting started. You know, maybe you were on a college campus and, you know, you might have had some type of scammy credit card company give you this e real easy application, one, two, three steps, and then you just started making these, you know, r basic transactions there. You went to the restaurant and bought something. You went to the shoe store and bought something on credit card debt. Spring debt money was used. Spring break uh, money was used on a credit card. This was just baby debt. And I'll tell you why in a second. But this was the second thing. 
your credit card. But then, after you got out of college, what happened? Did you start? Did you stop debt stacking there, or did you keep the fun rolling? What you did when you graduated from college was you said, "You know what? I've been working hard. I busted my butt for about a good four or five years, or maybe some of you post." Um, advanced degrees, post-education degrees. Some of you graduated and said, okay, now I got to get the flashy car. Or, you know, maybe I'm this big-time lawyer. Maybe I need the car. Maybe I'm a doctor. I might need the right car for it. Everybody else is pulling up in a Benz at my job. I got to play the part. I got to play the role. So what you did was you took out what was known as an auto loan, right? Because most people, the average person goes and buys a new car. They don't buy used cars, which I recommend, but they buy a new car. And I'll get back to the used car thing later. I'm not trying to sound too old in this video. The next thing that people do is they begin to start what's known as adult credit now. This is where the rubber really starts to hit the road. The baby credit that you had in college wasn't enough for you. Now you have to take that baby credit and turn it into adult credit. But that wasn't it. Because guess what everybody does after a few years' time? What's the number one thing that most people do to prove that they've reached adulthood? What's the number one thing that people do to put on Facebook, to get a million likes, to show that they've made it? The number one thing and the most expensive thing that people do after college is they buy a house. So... Last but not least, we are going to write an account for your mortgage. Now, if you notice, we have an entire debt stacking scenario here. You've got some student loans going. You've got a little bit of credit card debt. Just starting off. Nothing book. Maybe, maybe you use it to buy books. Something very light. Then you graduated, and then you got a car. You got more credit card debt. And then you decided that you wanted to get a house. Now, you might be saying, okay, yeah, I did that. So what? What's the significance of all of this? What's the point? If you're trying to really make a lot of money once you get out of college, the reason why this makes all the world of difference is because you need to understand how this plays into your net worth. So that's what we're going to talk about next. So when it comes to the subject of your net worth, because I know that they never taught that in college, they tell you about all of this trivial stuff that never really makes a difference outside of college, but they never taught you about net worth. What does it mean when you're talking about your net worth? Well, your net worth is actually pretty easy. It simply boils down to what's known professionally as your assets minus your liabilities. Okay? So, let's break this down to plain English now for those of you that are not financial nerds watching this video. Assets is what you own. Okay? Now, when I'm talking about things that you own, I'm not talking about your pair of Jordans. I'm not talking about your iPhone 6. I'm really not talking about what car you have to drive. I'm talking about things that appreciate in value. Things that go up in value. Say, for example, maybe you have some money in a 401k. Maybe you join your company's company match program. Maybe you decided to get a Roth IRA account, something like that. Maybe you have some money sitting in the bank account, cash, liquid. All of that goes into your assets. But now on the flip side of that, your liabilities is all about what you owe. So... We tend to rack up a lot of that when we first get out of college because we were all poor college students. We were all broke, right? And when you have things that you owe, guess what falls on that side? The student loans, the credit cards, the mortgage, all the loans, all of those things, they fall on this side. So guess what? If you owe more than you own, that means that you have a negative net worth. If you owe more than you own, that means that you're poorer than the person that just came out of their mother's womb yesterday 
and didn't own anything and didn't owe anything. That's the case for a lot of us when we are debt stacking. See, when I graduated from college, I was actually about $100,000, if not more, in the red. So really, you want to talk about starting from the bottom. When you graduate from college, and for so many people in the real world that don't know this, you're beyond starting from the bottom. You're starting from the negative amount of whatever you have in liabilities before you're even worth zero. Before you're worth nothing, you're already behind in the red. That's why I don't want you to debt stack. So to make this even more real for you, I'm going to go back to this page and show you how your net worth plays into your debt stacking scenario. So listen, when you were a kid, right, that was your net worth. You didn't have any assets. <laughs> you didn't have any, uh, you know, big time funds and bonds and stocks. You didn't have that. Zero dollars net worth. But when you went to college, let's say you're a recent college grad, 2016, the average student loan that you held in total and as a balance was negative $37,000. You came out of college owing thirty-seven dollars right? So that's already $37,000 that you have against you in your net worth from the time that you graduate college. You're already $37,000 behind. Now, when I graduated from college, like I said, I owed over $95,000 in student loan debt. So that's one of the most important things that you got to keep in mind is you you have to work hard enough just to get back. <laughs> to, I don't, to not try to depress you. I'm just trying to show you how to press forward in your goals because you have to know this. You have to work hard just to be able to get from negative 37,000. Okay. But then it doesn't stop there. The average person in college takes around roughly $500 in credit card debt while you were in college. That's why I said this was baby credit card. You wasn't doing nothing big. You thought you was doing something, but you wasn't really doing nothing like that. You just was using this as baby credit, just kind of playing around. $500, though. Still a lot of money. But then when you graduated, what happened? Remember that new car you got? <laughs> that thing was looking shiny on Instagram. Might have put some rims on that thing. Might have got the fresh wax job. Let's go ahead and add about 30 grand to that. All right. So that was negative $30,000. Bet you'll get think again about the next time you want to get a new car, huh? What about the adult credit? The adult credit... Average person in America, average household, $5,700 in credit card debt. But now, it doesn't end there. Because remember, the mother of all debts, the debt king, the mortgage. The average person in America right now owes a balance of $157,000 in their mortgage. So as you can see, if you were to actually take all of these numbers and add it up, you're well over 200 grand, right? And so you have to think now, you know, if I'm just getting out of college and, you know, everybody wants to live the American dream, go to school, get the good grades, and then when after you make the grades, go out and then buy it, get a, get a good car, get a good house. And these are all nice things to have. But keep in mind what you've been trained to do the moment you've get, gotten out of college. Here's one thing that I want to warn you on. For all of you that are making good money, I want you to notice that your income isn't actually a part of your net worth. Your income, your salary base, is not reflected on a balance sheet. The balance sheet is what tells you what your net worth is. What is your net worth? What you own minus what you owe. So even if you're making $100,000, that's not reflected in your net worth or your balance sheet because the only thing that is reflected is how much money was actually sitting in your bank accounts at the time that you did the statement. So these are all things to keep in mind. But this is going to be there, though. The mortgage is going to be there. The car loan, the auto loan is going to be there. 
your credit card debt, that's going to be there. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a really good picture before you get yourself into a further debt spiral, into the dangers of debt stacking. Because as you can see, it really, before you even talk about getting on, you know, millionaire level, six-figure net worth level, hell, even breaking even for so many people in most cases, it's going to take you so long just to undo a lot of the work that you did just to get yourself in the red. That's why I don't want you to engage in debt stacking. This is what most people do when they get out of college. They buy all of these shiny objects to feel validated on how hard they worked because society tells them that in order for them to have status, they have to have status symbols. I want you to be aware of that. I want you to stop debt stacking, okay? But if that's not enough, I want you to consider some other things. So we're going to move past this. Not too much more to go. I just want to simply illustrate to you the downsides, because there are downsides. I want to illustrate to you the downsides of debt stacking. So the first downside is something, five letter word that I hate to say every day, it's called bills. This is the number one sign of adulthood, bills. Now, most of us have bills to cover a lot of necessities, but we add more bills to the equation when we get in the midst of debt stacking. And you know, one of the things that Warren Buffett said that so simple but so profound is, you know, you don't go broke if you don't owe anybody anything. But if you're debt stacking all the time, you're going to have more bills than a person that stays out of those debts, right? So just think about it. You're taking all of these bills, credit cards, student loans, car notes, all of these things. That means that you're going to have to always talk to your student loan lender. You're going to always have to talk to somebody regarding your mortgage. You're going to always have to talk to somebody regarding your car note, all of these things, right? So there's going to be an added stress just by you paying your bills, I don't know about you, but I don't like the thought of managing bills. I don't like the idea of being late on paying my bills. I really try to stay away from anything that has to do with bills. <laughs> I like money to stay in my bank account. I don't like all of my money going to bills. This is the reason why it's been coined to pay yourself first, right? So you want to stay away from bills because bills leads to what? Low wealth. Remember, what is wealth all about? Wealth is all about your net worth. How much are you worth? What is your net worth? What you own minus what you owe. If you're always owing on bills, that means that you have low wealth, right? So you don't want to have rack up too many bills because this is affecting you not only now, but five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line, if you pass away and you want things to give to your family, guess what? You won't have much if everything is already in liabilities. So I want you to think about how your present scenario in the debt stacking you're doing now for your bills adds up to the future because you're going to be more and more and more concerned with building your wealth. See, that's what my primary focus is on. It's not on how many shiny toys I can accumulate, but rather how wealthy I can become so that way I can benefit, my family can benefit, and the community that I want to serve can benefit all from the fruits of my labor and my wealth. You know, you'll work hard in your life, guaranteed, but the question is will you have something to show for it when it's all said and done? You won't if you have low wealth. So, downsides. Bills, which leads to low wealth. Now, what else? If you're stuck with bills, you know what else you're going to be stuck with? A job that you hate. You're going to be stuck with a job you hate because you're, you keep debt stacking and racking up more and more and more bills that doesn't allow you to get out of a job. This is the reason why 
When you go into environments like corporate America, you will see very disgruntled middle-aged people because they hate their job, but they can't get out of it because they're so laden with debt. They're so buried with bills that they say, I have to stay in the job, otherwise, how am I going to feed my family? How will the mortgage get paid? What car will I have to drive if I don't pay my car note? This is what makes people wage slaves. That's what I want you to understand. If you want to be able to, at any point, to be able to move to another job, another career, take on other passions, I want you to listen very good to what I'm saying. Because as you debt stack, it's doing more than just affecting your balance sheet. It's also affecting your happiness. And if you have lots of bills and low wealth with a job you hate, guess what? That's going to be the road to unhappiness. Right? Because I'm guessing that's the reason why over 80% of people in America right now are unsatisfied because they hate their job. Think about how many people right now are on depression pills. Think about how many people right now in America wish they had other opportunities. They're looking for it in a presidential election. They're looking for it from some, something else. They're looking for a savior. Why? Because they found themselves stuck in a bad situation through debt stacking. Don't let that happen to you. Right? So, all of these things lead to unhappiness. Now, this is what I call a formula for disaster. If you want to find yourself having short-term pleasure but long-term hell, the best way you can do that is rack up a lot of bills so you don't have any wealth and then find yourself, pick any job. <laughs> pick any job because you're going to be stuck there because you're going to have to pay bill after bill after bill after bill with no freedom to get out. Now, the question is, how do you stop yourself from debt stacking? Because if you've gathered anything from this video, the number one most important thing that I want you to understand is there is a better way for you to thrive after college and thrive in the real world as long as you're not a victim of debt stacking. Because I, I just got to be honest in the fact that what society tells you is the American dream is actually the American nightmare. Because you've bought into a marketing scheme that's told you to buy things relentlessly, that's really not going to make you happy at the end of the day. And even statistics and research has proven that. It's not the material wealth that makes you happy. It's the experiences of things that makes you happy. Okay? So I want you to understand that. But now let's talk a little bit about how not to debt stack. So let's revisit all the ways. In fact, what we will do is we will go through every single step of the way where you started the process of debt stacking and then we will work to move you out of your situation okay so let's look at the student loan debt thirty-seven thousand dollars right now if you're somebody that's young and you haven't went to college yet i think that i speak for every college graduate across the world when i say you need to be spending more time trying to get scholarships more scholarships more grants don't be lazy on that because this is not free money. You are going to have to pay it someday. You have so many people that are waiting for some type of free program that just X's out all of their student loan debt. Meanwhile, they're suffering. Work on your grants. Work on your scholarships. If you have student loans now and you're in the adult world, pay your student loans off. Get rid of the student loans before you move on to more and more and more debt. This is the thing that I see all the time. People like to shortchange their student loan debt and they get more debt that stacks on top of this debt and it just makes their life more miserable. Don't do that, okay? Now, if you have a decent job, pay additional payments to the student loan. Pay as much as you can. Pay whatever you need to pay down on it. Call your lenders. Work out arrangements. Work out agreements, okay? Try to get your interest rate lowered. If you've been a consistent payer on your student loans for some period of time, they will work out better terms with you for your interest rates, right? 
So at a minimum, I think you need to give these guys a call and figure out, you know, how can I best pay off my student loans as quickly as possible? It doesn't hurt to call. Now, moving on to the credit cards. Same situation. Your credit cards need to be paid off as quickly as possible because the interest rate on your credit card is probably higher than any other debt that you have, right? The average person probably has some type of interest rate that's somewhere around 15%. God forbid it's even higher than that. Some I've seen as high as 24%, almost 30%. What you want to do in this case is you want to pay off your credit card debt as quickly as possible. For some of you, you're going to pay the highest interest first. For some of you, you're going to pay the lowest amount first and continually pay from there. But what I need you to do is I need you to get out of your credit card debt as quickly as possible. A lot of you like to have your money in savings, but if you have a lot of money in savings, but you have a lot of credit card debt, your debt is growing a hell of a lot faster than the interest from your savings. It makes no sense for you to have all this cash stored in savings, but then you have a lot of credit, right? At a bare minimum, you should have about $1,000 in saving to cover minor expenses, but outside of that, you need to be on a full-fetched plan to get rid of your credit card debt, your baby debt, and your adult debt. Again, the same thing holds true from your student loan as it does here. Call up the credit card company. See how you can get that interest rate lowered. See what terms that you can get to get your credit situation resolved. Pay this one off first. Out of all the debts here, pay this one off first. Okay. Now, quick disclaimer. You don't have to follow me and do what I'm saying because this is not any professional investment advice. I don't want you to call me and get me sued because you're saying I'm trying to give you professional investment advice. I just happen to be a person that actually was in this situation and paid off my student loan debt, paid off my credit card debt, only got a mortgage when I had a duplex where I could have a tenant pay on this for me. So I'm just trying to give you the steps that I took to work out the situation on my own. Okay. Now that I've stopped myself from getting sued, let me move on. Now, when it comes to your auto loan, this is where it starts to get funny. Because anybody that knows me knows I never encourage people to get new cars. Rarely ever. Rarely ever would I encourage somebody to get a new car. Even when I got out of all my debt and started to build wealth, I never bought a new car. I bought a used car. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times, you know, you got things like CarMax and all these, you know, used car companies now. They keep the quality of the car so good that you don't even realize you're getting a used car. There's no need to get a new car. It's expensive as hell. And a lot of times you're just paying for a new car. Not so much of the fact that you want such a high performance vehicle, but just because that's a status quo thing to do. If you're just getting out of college, trust me when I say you don't need a new car, right? If you're just getting out of college, or if you're not financially secure, I don't think that a new car should be on the top of your priority list. You're in grind mode. Right now, you have things like Uber, Lyft, that can get you from place to place. If you're grinding like for one year or for two years, I wouldn't even think about getting a car. But if you do get a car, I recommend getting a used car. So that way you're not putting $30,000 in debt behind you. I mean, honestly, just take a step back and look at this. Somebody, hypothetically speaking, and this happens pretty often, more often than you would think. By the age 28, let's say, somebody would have put themselves in this entire debt stacking scenario. And not have all of this paid off until they're 60 or 70 years old. Right? Think about how, think about what the effects of that would be. You don't want the decisions that you make negatively, poor decisions that you make in your 20s, make you pay for the rest of your life all the way up until your deathbed. Don't do that. Please don't go out and buy new cars if you don't have any money to your name. Please don't do that. You can get a used car, you can get rides. You can carpool with people to work. You're in grind mode. Now is not the time for luxury. See, that, that, that's really what this video is about. This video is about teaching you the steps that leads to success. 
when you're first getting out of college and you're trying to get yourself stabilized, you're not in floss mode. You're in grind mode. <laughs> but for a lot of people, based upon things that they see in pop culture, television, friends, family, and mainly all of those people might be broke themselves but are just trying to live up to the hype, Everybody is trying to be on floss mode the minute that they graduate from the stage. And that's what's going to keep you in debt for the rest of your life. Don't do that. You're in grind mode now. You'll get to the fancier cars later or the bigger house later, but you have to start small. you got to crawl before you can walk. So these are the things for the auto loan. Now, if you're really serious and you have a new car and you've been watching this video and you're really trying to get yourself out of a financial hole, I've seen people sell their cars. I've seen people do what they needed to do so that way they could get themselves out of this car note. Because I think what the average car note now in America is like almost five hundred dollars, four hundred something dollars. So you got to think about that's five hundred dollars every single month, right? How far could you go in your life if you were able to invest five hundred dollars every month? If you were to take that same five hundred dollars and you were to put it in an investment fund, how much money would that be 10 years from now, 20 years from now? But instead, you're taking that same money that could turn you into a millionaire, and you're putting it on the 2016 edition of whatever car that you want to drive around. And you're not even going to hold on to the car but three or four years until you're getting another one. So, bottom line... I would do everything that I could to get out of this car situation. I like used cars, but you get like, you have to get out of this car loan situation. No good right there. Now, when it comes to your mortgage, probably going to hold on to that for a while. The best thing that I would advise is, if you found yourself in a mortgage, in many cases, if you haven't bought a house yet, I would think twice before buying one. Because I'll tell you right now, if I wasn't finding myself in a situation where I'm a real estate investor and I had a tenant paying down on my mortgage for this property, I wouldn't be in a house. I would just be in an apartment. Because a lot of times, home ownership is very expensive. And a lot of times, home ownership is not as fancy and as uh, rosy as people think. Because guess what? Anytime something breaks down, repairs, renovations, guess who's covering the bill? You. And a lot of times those things happen when you least expect it. Okay? So, for those of you who haven't gotten a home yet, I would think twice about getting one or the type of investment in a home that you're getting. Okay? If you do have a mortgage, understand this. It's not always a bad look. But what I would advise is that you would stay in the house for a while. You know, why put yourself behind $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 in debt and you're not even going to stay in the home at least five years I would advise you to at least stay in a home at least 10 years if you're going to be putting yourself behind this type of debt for the average person you know I know everybody's situation is different some of you might be thinking about flipping maybe you're going to start a home maybe you have all of these different plans in place where you're going to recoup the money but just as a general rule of thumb if you're going to take out a mortgage, which is going to be your most expensive um, expense, notice how I'm saying the word expense and not investment. If you're going to have this as your largest expense, I would think that you should be staying in that home for a decent period of time. All right, guys, so that we've reached the end of the video. If there's anything I want you to take away from this message is that I don't want you to rush into debt. You will be successful. You can be successful. But give it time, okay? The race is not given to the swift. I want you to make sure that you do smart financial decisions that benefits you, not hinders you from years on end. So with that, I'm going to tell you, don't debt stack, okay? Make an investment in your future now. You're watching this video now, so that way, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, you can take your kids and you can show them. You can show your family members how not to debt stack. The choice for your financial future is in your hands. So what will you do to stop debt stacking? See you soon.